Hey everyone, and uh, welcome back for another tutorial here on the channel. Um, a lot of things have happened since the last time I gained a thousand subscribers, so thank you very much for that. Um, so crazy how quickly I gained those, so uh, I will definitely start doing more tutorials on a regular basis. Um, and uh, yeah, I also changed the name of the channel to my own name, Jonas. And um, the reason for this is, uh, as I got the thousand subscribers, um, I wanted to be more transparent with the channel. I wanted to show you who's behind the channel. And uh, also just for the future's sake, um, I want to put myself out there even more. I'm a bit of an introvert, so I thought this would be a good idea to put myself out um, with my own name and um, yeah just uh, to be more transparent uh, with you guys so um, but yeah so um, let's just uh, dive straight in um, I uploaded a picture on my uh, channel yesterday um, about like a product render with a lipstick that I did and um, I thought I would show you guys how I used the Quixel Megascans assets um, for that uh, scene and um, yeah in general I think that using like 3D assets from for example make a scan is quite an effective way to train your eye and your um, like environment which is something that's quite difficult with 3Ds to create interesting environments so um, yeah let's just dive straight in and um, yeah we're just gonna take this um, along the way and uh, yeah so I'll just take a cup of tea and then uh, yeah so here we have the um, the scene and um, as you can see I've already set it up uh, I imported this rock um, which is which is also the one that I use for the 3d render and um, yeah I just went to the um, quicksil Megascans uh, web page and downloaded this rock sandstone in 8k resolution you can also do it in 4k or 2k if you want but the uh, 8k uh, is of course a higher resolution and gives you a more like realistic looking uh, rock and uh, yeah this one was the one that I used and um, I imported it and set it up in a quite simple scene as you see here on the uh, top of the right with uh, just a backdrop and uh, yeah um, rather simple uh, the way that I imported this was that I up into the file setting and then imported it as an um, FBX and uh, then you're just going to find the uh, folder that you have and then the I found that the LOD0 is the one with the highest quality here it says like with um, 853 um, kilobyte and um, the 5 is the, the um, laser resolution kind of 3D asset. So I just of course took the highest one and they just imported this as an FBX. Um, and then I just set it up and uh, I quickly lighted it with a, just a Studio Garden HDRI. Uh, it was just easier for this one instead of setting up my own light. I'm just saving. Um, so yeah, let's just look at the node tree over here, which I created for this um, this rock here. Um, so if we go into the viewport shading, you can see here's the scene and the uh, kind of uh, just bland uh, 3D asset. And um, if we take a closer look, um, these are the ones that are set up. And uh, let me actually just delete these ones just to show you just from the beginning what I did this is just an image texture that I kind of just searched on here I just searched on image texture and you will get an image I, I guess you, you know this and um, then I just opened it and I went to the folder where also all of the kind of uh, maps are and the texture maps for the uh, for the rock and uh, for the kind of base color, uh, I use the albedo, so I load this one in, for, uh, and then I wanted something for the uh, roughness, so I went in again and chose the roughness, 
and down here I also wanted to import the normal map. I just used the highest resolution normal map. And uh, for the image texture down here, I took the displacement, which is also quite important from this one. So yeah, and then uh, I also had the bump maps here. And um, I will show you why I have those in just a sec. Uh, if I turn this one on. But they start up here. Um, so the first thing that, I, well, that we want to do is color our objects. Uh, in this case, our rock. And we want to, yeah, just take the color information that um, Megascan gave us. So if I plug this one into the color, you can see instantly, yeah, we have the uh, the texture on the rock, the um, the color that it should be with all of the different kind of color spots and color differences in between. And this is just like Megascan's, um, yeah, rock. And uh, for the roughness, I put that into the roughness so it looks more like a like a rock, like the the kind of way that that Quixel wanted it to look. And uh, as you can see, this is nice and you could call it a day, but of course we need more texture. Um, if we look at our um, rock uh, reference image here, this is what it should look like. And uh, this is nowhere near uh, how we are getting it to look. And um, so yeah, we need to do something about the, the assets here. So of course, um, for a normal map, you could plug in a normal map here into the normal and then take the color information into the um into this uh into the uh, color here and you will instantly see that we we already get much more detail into this rock and i can also bump this one up and you can see that we start to get quite crisp and nice details and this is all fine and yeah, this is one way of doing it. But actually, I think for Blender, and I saw this trick in another place, I can't remember where, but you can actually um, get closer to what the Megascans asset was by adjusting all of these normal maps yourself and the displacement of the rock. So the way you're going to do this is that you're going to use the bump node instead. So you take the color information from the normal map into the height and then you also take the color information from the displacement into the height and then you're going to take the bump here down here normal and plug it into the top bumps and you're kind of um, connecting these two nodes with each other and then you're just going to plug the, the normal into the normal right here and as you can see nothing uh, is happening and that's because we haven't played with the respective strings yet. So if I just pop this one up to like, let's say all the way up to one, you can see that we already start to getting these kind of details within this image. And if I scroll in here, you can see that we got this, we're getting this texture within the rock. This doesn't look <laughs> that much, uh, realistic so you can dial this one down and you can see you can start off to play with like how much you want the normal map to affect the uh, 3d asset for this one i'm just looking at also kind of here down in the shadows uh, and i think around one zero point one i have experimented with this so i know um, we just want a little bit of information. I don't know if you can see it here on YouTube, but we just want a little bit of information for this one. And um, they were just going to bump the strength of the displacements all the way up. And now you can see that we have a really nice textured rock. Um, nicely colored, nicely displaced, nicely uh, textured with this roughness. And yeah, it's just... It looks like a real uh, 3D rock, or not a free like a real rock, but in a 3D environment. And this is the, the the thing that we want. And you can play with these values. You can see, yeah, I can turn all the way down and all the way off. So let's say you think this is a bit too much, maybe down to 0 0.75 is better. You can pump this one up a bit if you want more texturing uh, within. 
And one thing that you should be um, thinking about is that right now we see it from a distance. So it can be a good idea to bump these one higher up than you think, because the farther away you are, uh, the more kind of depth you need in the uh, asset to make it look realistic. If we are a lot closer, you can start to see the uh, kind of not realistic textures and you and you might have to like start dialing these things down if you do a render where it's much more um, close up um but for this one i think we can use this value so this just gives you compared to the other technique just gives you a, a lot more control over your 3d asset um and control in whatever way you you want to lighten this one and texture this one um, yeah, it has nothing to do with light. I don't know why I said that, but um, yeah, this way I promise you that you can get really nice looking renders. And for the um, for the scene that I did yesterday, I actually just to show you why it doesn't quite look as like this rock is because I just thought it would be nice to turn it kind of like wide. I don't know why, but. I used a, a color ram just I think just to emphasize more like a like a cold environment, a more minimal environment. So I actually just plug this one in and I slided this one down to get an even more kind of chalk uh, chalk chalk, isn't that how you say it? Like I don't know how you say it in English, maybe chalk like um texture. And now you can see that we we're starting to play with some nice effects for this one. Um this is Actually, I think this is quite nice. But for this purpose, of course, what you're looking after is to create the most realistic one, and that's this one here. Um, so yeah, this is our note tree. It's it's rather simple, and you can easily set this up. Um, just remember to experiment with the values here in the bumps, um, because this will depend differently on whatever kind of situation you're using it for. But um, yeah, thank you for today and uh, hope you uh, learned a bit and uh, go out and explore the uh, Megascans library. I will link it down below and uh, you can just find it there and uh, download some assets and uh, explore your creativity, um, creating nice environments. And you can always write me if you have any issues or if you want my input on some of your um, Brinders, I'm happy to uh, give you any um, advice in, that I might have. And um, yeah, also go follow me on Twitter or Instagram if you want. Um, I'll have also a profile there that I'm trying to build up. So uh, if you are on those channels, just go follow me. You can find it um, down in the description or on my channel. And um, yeah, so I'm happy to be here as uh, Jonas and uh, See you next. Bye.